Um, just to talk about Miles Davis for a second. Um, it's funny when they talk about the people who are the greatest of all time. And, you know, there's the Beatles, there's Elvis, there's Michael Jackson. But Miles is never discussed. And if you look at his just... I discuss him all the time. <laughs> I know. But it's just amazing when they have those lists. It's like, where's Miles? Because <laughs> the stuff that he did was so revolutionary. Like, he could have stayed as a bebop guy. He could have stayed there and been, been great. Yeah. But he just said, no, I'm going to try this. Yeah. But he did, he's never in that conversation. Yeah. It's a part of, so Kind of Blue was made in three days. One of the five mm-hmm. best-selling jazz albums of all time. Right. If you're a perfectionist, I would ask you, if Miles had spent 20 days making it, would it have been better or would it have been worse? It would have mm-hmm. been worse because the occasional note that's out of sync makes part of the magic happen. The other thing that's amazing about Miles is his side people were at least half the equation. How did that happen? How do you end up working with you know Herbie Hancock at the beginning of his career and, and Bird and everybody else? And the answer is you create the conditions for people to get to where they want to go. So unlike many band leaders before Miles, he didn't say, you must be in the background, my way or the highway. He said, let's trade fours. And it was this collaborative idea of making music, not making a profit, mm-hmm. that made the side people show up. And you know, the back cover of my book doesn't have any blurbs on it. All it says is, uh, the purpose of a hive is not to make honey. Honey is the byproduct of a successful hive. And I think the same thing is true for Miles and his groups. Half his records were below average. That's just the definition of averages. But the times that they got it right, they got it right because he made a room where magic could happen. 